Shalom, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and Danoon Institute. I uh, got a very interesting broadcast, uh, something that the Holy Spirit revealed to me just recently. And I wanted to share it with you. And it is regarding why uh, today's modern Judaism, whether it be Israel or anywhere around the world, uh, identifies a child that is born being Jewish by a maternal ancestry, not by the paternal, not by the father, but by the maternal. And this was something that was changed during the times of the Talmud uh, under the Mishnah uh, laws. And it is something that has <clears throat> been done now for many, many generations. And I have a strong feeling I know why. And I believe that something that the Holy Spirit revealed to me recently that is, can be backed up and proven by Scripture. But yet at the same time, we are talking a very, about a very controversial subject. Uh, so I ask you, please, Bear with me, take your time, listen to this video in detail, uh, because what we're going to be discussing is definitely not, uh, as they used to say, skim milk. This has definitely got all the fat that it needs to be included with it. Uh, now keep in mind, as we're looking at this, you have to understand too, that Prime Minister Netanyahu, when they did the Jewish national state law, also promised the uh, Haredi community, which is the Orthodox community, that Israel would be ran by the Talmud, uh, that the Talmudic law would be precedent in Israeli society. That's very dangerous in many, many uh, cases because Talmud is definitely not the Bible. And uh, it has nothing to do with Torah. It has nothing to do with the prophets or the writings, <clears throat> which makes up the entire uh, Tanakh. Uh, and so therefore, it is a very dangerous uh, book. And in fact, my wife did a very uh, deep study on this. She's been speaking out at the conferences there. She has shared that information um, there. And we have published part of her excerpts on um, patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. Uh, so let me get right into this. This is from our uh, my Jewish learning. You can also look this up on Chabad.org. You can see their thoughts on uh, how this was changed. But the question is asked, who is a Jew? Now notice what they write on here. Although the Hebrew Bible defines Jewish identity in uh, paternal terms, determined by the identity of the father, the Mishnah states that the offspring of a Jewish mother and a non-Jewish father is recognized as a Jew, while the offspring of a non-Jewish mother and a Jewish father is considered a non-Jew. The Talmudic position became normative in Jewish law. In other words, whatever the Torah says, in the garbage can that goes, and now the Talmud, these rabbis, have uh, exalted themselves over that of what Moses is, uh, the prophet that God gave who sent to us and shared with us his law. Now when Yeshua comes, we can see by the woman at the well who is a Samaritan that he considered her to be a Jew because he went to his own. And of course, uh, so he considered her being a Jew even though she was a Samaritan. And if I understand right, that is a Jewish mother and a non-Jewish father. But nonetheless, in both cases, whether it's your mother's Jewish or your father, you are a Jew based on that. But why would the children of Israel, why would they take and throw out the paternal side of the argument? Why would they actually allow a Talmudic law from the Mishnah uh, and say that your father, if he is a non-Jew, but your mother is a Jew, then you're a Jew, but if your father is a Jew and your mother is non-Jew, you're not a Jew. Why would they intentionally go against the Torah itself and defile the very word of the living God in favor of a Talmudic tradition? Well, I think the answer lies all through the Bible, and I'm going to share with you. We're going to start actually by going to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 8, beginning with verse 30. Got quite a few verses I'm going to look at here, but I think this really sums up most of it. But I need to prove the case that Yeshua says here. And it's something that used to always confuse me. But now by the grace of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, I know exactly what it's speaking about. It says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. 
Doesn't mean all of them, many of them, right? Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Now that was because of many that believed on him, but there's also a group that didn't believe. That's who we find out about as well. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Because it is a, you got to remember, it's kind of confusing at first, but it's a mixed multitude standing there together. So the many that believed, he continues to speak to them, but it's going to be those that don't believe that are going to respond back to him. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed, we're, we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall be make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know, now watch this, very important, verse 37, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father. You do that which you have seen with your father. Whoa. Whoa. There it is. <clears throat> All right. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Wow. Now, by the way, Abraham's seed comes through the woman. In case you didn't know that, because going back to Genesis, God said he'd put enmity between the woman's seed and that serpent's seed. All right? But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Now that's a loaded return statement in itself. He said, they seek to kill him, a man that hath told you the truth, which I heard of God. This did not Abraham. Yeshua is claiming to be the very one that was standing there when he come down to Sodom and Gomorrah. To over, well, he didn't go to Sodom, but he stayed with Abraham. And they all looked over the judgment that was about to fall on Sodom. And that's the man that was telling Abraham the truth. Like, for example, when he said to him, why did Sarah laugh? When she was in the tent behind Abraham, and Sarah says, I didn't laugh. Sarah lied, but not, a, you know, see, he told Abraham the truth. Your wife, she did laugh. Right? Now, Abraham believed him. And Yeshua places himself as if he was the one himself talking to Abraham. In other words, he didn't reject him. Instead, he stayed right with him the whole time. You do the deeds of your father. Then say they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. So he is, he is claiming that, that, that their father is the devil. Right? But notice though, remember Jesus also said, I know you're of Abraham's seed. He's identifying that their mothers are descendants of Abraham, but not their father. Now that's pretty tough to hear, but you've got to pay close attention. I'm going to prove my point here, so let's, let's, let's continue on. Why do you not understand my speech even because you cannot hear my word? You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and bode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? If I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. Wow, that's pretty strong. And then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? They tried to flip it back around on him. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. All right, so... Jesus set the stage, Yeshua setting the stage, 
clearly identifying those Pharisees that did not believe his message were of the devil. But he also acknowledges, I really got to make sure I drive this in so you can clearly see what I'm going to show you here. Just, Father, help me to get people to see what you showed me. They're of Abraham's seed. Remember, Abraham's seed is the promise of the woman. In other words, through the genealogy, through the mother, they had connection to Abraham, but their father they did not. All right, their fathers they did not. Now, let me, we're going to back up a little bit. We're going to go back to the Old Testament. I want to show you some very important verses here. Remember Genesis chapter 6, Bereshit. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, took them wives whomsoever they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he also has flesh, therefore shall his days be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they bore children to them. The same were of old mighty men. They were of old the men of renown. What kind of men were they? The Nephilim. Now, anybody that knows anything about Enoch knows that Enoch goes into greater detail. The fallen angels, the watchers themselves, they came down, not all of them, but about 200 of them come down. They cohabitated with the daughters of man, which was Adam and Eve's daughters. Now, again, I'm going to share with you, this is things not written in the canon that we have today, but through Apocrypha writings, we find out, and I think it's from the Apocryphon of John, that it speaks about how that they came to, these angels came to these women, that were, they were actually married, tried to sleep with them, but they refused them. But then he records that they changed their form to look like their husbands. They basically raped these women. They brought forth these giants, these Nephilim, but it wasn't through the will of these daughters of, of man, which are daughters of God. But the Nephilim, they came related to Adam by relation of the daughters, not by their fathers. Okay? You understand? This is where it's going with Yeshua. And I'm going to prove to you. I'll show you how that came down even after the flood. Because most people would say, all right, Steve, but after the flood, they were all killed. That's true. Remember how even in Enoch, they, the, the watchers, they, they come to Enoch and they're begging for the life of their children not to, be, not to die. That God would have mercy upon them. But there was no place for repentance whatsoever for the Nephilim. Now I know there's some that they believe that in the case of Adam and Eve in the garden, they believe that Eve ended up having a sexual relationship with with. Uh, with the devil, the serpent. Now, I don't believe that that's exactly correct. I believe it comes through the fallen angels. This is where the serpent seed or the fallen race starts in is where these women were raped. I do not believe that it was Eve. And the reason why I say that is because in the case of Cain and Abel, when God comes down and he sees that Cain is angry, with his brother Abel, God says to him, would you not be accepted as your brother if you do well? He had a place where he could repent. But Cain refused to repent. He just never did repent. That's what got Cain into trouble. And you can't say that he offered a bad sacrifice. He may have not have done it with his heart, which is what it seems to be scripturally, because the same sacrifice that he offered is also as an accepted sacrifice in Levitical law. You can bring a grain. You can bring fruit of the field. It's also accepted as a sacrifice. A meal offering, if you'll recall. All right, so it couldn't necessarily be the sacrifice itself that he offered, because even a meal offering is a type of 
the communion that we do in remembrance of the Lord, Yeshua, right? So, but in the case of the Nephilim, nowhere in Scripture do they ever, according to the Book of Enoch, are they ever given a place of repentance. Destruction will come upon the world, they will be killed off, and they will be totally done away with. That's the serpent seed race. That is where that race comes into being. All right, now, we see this, we see what the Scripture says. All right, so they are... Their mothers are descendants of Adam. We're not dealing with Abraham as of yet, but their fathers, of course, are from the fallen ones. All right? Now, if we also take a look at the book of Numbers, chapter 13, starting with verse 27, and they told him and said, We came into the land, whether thou sent us, this is the spies, the ten spies that Joshua and Caleb come with, Moses sent them to spy out the land that is going to be flowing with milk and honey. They're coming to bring the children of Israel too. So we came to the land, whether you sent us, surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. If you remember, they brought back the huge amounts of grapes, massive in size, took two strong men to carry it, etc., but said, how be it the people that dwell in the land are fierce and the cities are fortified very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Amalek dwelleth in the land of the south and the Hittite and the Jebusite and the Amorite dwelleth in the mountains of the Canaanite, dwelleth by the sea along uh, by the side of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people toward Moses and said, we should go up at once and possess it for we are able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they spread an evil report, the land which they had spied out in the children of Israel, saying, The land though, uh, th through which we have passed to spy out is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. They were eating the human beings, just like it was in the days of Enoch. Enoch shows how that they sinned against the animals and against the people, and they were eating the people when they couldn't sustain them with the food from the ground. Same thing going on there. See? They eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of what? Great stature. And there we saw... This is in the KJV for those of you that think there weren't Nephilim after the flood. We saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who came, who come of the Nephilim. We were in our own sight as grasshoppers, so we were in their sight. How did they get the giants after the flood in that day there? Now some try to say, well, they snuck them in on the ark. I don't believe that. I think that's a false doctrine. And well, let me let me. I don't want to call it a doctrine. I think it's a false analogy because the scripture tells us how they did it, and this is why it's important. This is after the flood. So then, how did Abraham end up with children, which were the Pharisees? Now, not all the Pharisees, mind you, but some of those Pharisees. Yeshua said they were of their father, the devil, and his works shall do. Well, the Nephilim are from the devil. And they do the works of the devil. They devour, they are cannibals, they eat human beings, they are giants. Later, though, they learned how to control the size. We'll get into that in a moment, all right? But let me go and let me show you here. How did they do it? That's the question. How did they do it? Leviticus 18. Let's start with verse 19. And thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is impure by her uncleanliness. And thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. Do you notice these are all sexual these are all sexual laws that are being given. Keep that in mind. Verse 24, 21, excuse me. And thou shalt not give any of thy seed to set them apart to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Whoa. Sexual sins. Don't sleep with her this way. Don't sleep with your neighbor's wife. Now don't give your seed to set it apart to Molech. What? Remember, it's the woman's seed. They were trying to bring in 
the Nephilim through this evil. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Everything's of sex. Why do you think then the seed is any different? Why, why would he throw all these sexual laws and when it says here, thou shalt not give any of thy seed to set them apart to Molech, that has nothing to do with a sexual sin. Clarify it though, Steve. All right, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy says here, verse 8, They shall have like portions to eat beside that which is due according to the Father's house. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Abomination is filthiness. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, one that useth divination or soothsaying or an enchanter or a sorcerer or a charmer or one that consulteth a ghost or a familiar spirit or a necromancer. For whosoever doeth these things is an abomination to the Lord because of the abomination of the Lord thy God is driving them out from before thee. That's how they brought forth these children. The passing through the fire... And if you ever notice, in KJV, they, they put the word Molech in there. Now, it doesn't say Molech, but that's what they were doing in Leviticus. See, in Leviticus, thou shalt not give any of thy seed to set them apart. It's actually passing through to Molech. The only difference is, is Deuteronomy adds the word fire, ash, which I believe is a veil that it's speaking of. I don't say they didn't really do children's sacrifices, but the point is, is they are literally, they found a way through these fallen angels to get pregnant again and bring forth these children. Now, scripturally, can we prove it? Sure we can. I'll show you. All right, now, in the book of Jude, I want you to notice what Jude brings out. He says in verse 3, it's only one chapter, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you, exhort you, that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. How in the world do you get a person that's ordained to condemnation? That means there's no place to repent. It's impossible for them to find a way to repent because they're ordained to it. He's quoting Nephilim. That's from the book of Enoch. They were ordained for ordained to the condemnation because of what the fallen angels did. They brought forth these children that had no business doing it. Watch what he says, though. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and, the, and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, and how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. There were Nephilim that came out with the children of Israel. That's why they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. He had to take out that race because the Amalekites, Dr. Pigeon pointed this out when we were at the conference there in Kansas, the Amalekites were from the Nephilim. If you look in the scripture, Moses writes about Noph and Tophanes. Noph are the Nephilim. A lot of people don't know that. And the angels which kept not what? their first estate, but left their own habitation hath he reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. It's their children. They have managed to constantly bring back this demonic Nephilim race. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth in his example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, what? Also these filthy dreamers. The word filthy is added. Also, these dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Now, actually, the word speaking evil of dignities is speaking evil of the anointed ones. They speak evil of those two witnesses that are coming. 
Yeah, Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. All right? Now, what is it? Now, he speak. by the way, the reason why he says that right there, you have to go back up to verse 8. They speak evil against the, the, the anointed ones. The dignities are the anointed ones, which are your two witnesses, right? And the devil disputed with Michael the archangel about the body of Moses. Why? Because he's one of the anointed ones. He's one of the two witnesses that are coming. That's why he actually spe- says this in here. That's amazing. It just goes over people's heads. I can't, I, I don't get it. They're too stuck. You know, oh, you got to die. It's one of the ones to man to die. Although the verse, the whole chapter is about Yeshua and the fact that he only has to come and die once for us. Not every single day, not every time you sin. He only comes once to die. Has nothing to do with Enoch. Oh, Moses died. Okay. All right. Whatever. At any rate. So now we look and we see what Yeshua says. Right? When he says in John here, you're of your father, the devil, and his works you'll do. But he admits that they are children of Abraham. He said, yeah, you're, you're, you're the seed of Abraham because of their mothers. So why did the Talmud then change the word of God and say that you're Jewish by your mother and not your father? Because they knew that their fathers had taken and instead of of keeping the commandment of God, they had sinned against God's word and they had sent their children through the fire to Molech and had brought forth sons from that race, from the Nephilim race, and they were in among the people there and, and the people did not even realize who they were, but Yeshua knew who they were. See, this is what gets me. Look, see, what did Jude say? When I showed you what Jude said here, there, this is how you know. They're no longer giants. The Nephilim, they had learned how to overcome the giantism part. So it says, for there are certain men crept in unaware. But what? They were of old ordained to this condemnation. Jude is showing you that these men that were creeping in unaware were no longer giants like it was in the times of Enoch or in the times of David when he had to go in there and destroy both men, women, and children because they had intermingled amongst this demonic race. But they were all giants in. You could, you could tell them apart. Now they creep in that you can't tell who they are anymore because they're not giants. They're not 10 feet, 12 foot, 14 foot tall anymore. But Jesus knew, Yeshua knew who they were. He knew them by their fruits, by their works. Now, he also gives it away in a parable. And then I'm going to share with you one more in Revelation. In a parable, he says, And another parable put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. Literally, if you look at the Hebrew Matthew here, he says here, let me find the verse here. He said before them another parable, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sows good seed. It came to pass, because he doesn't even say the word field. It came to pass when the men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares over the wheat. That is, Beriaga. And he went away. In other words, the enemy came and brought forth children. In other words, the enemy came in and he planted his seed in the daughters of God. And brought forth a Nephilim race. It's hidden right there in the parable. But while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. And went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Yeshua said, what? By their fruits you shall know them. What did he say over here in John 8? He knew them by their fruits, by what they did. The enemy sowed the, sowed the seed, but he sowed it in the daughters of Israel. That's why the Mishnah, that's why the Talmud had to make it to where you're Jew by your mother and not your father, because they know their father is the devil. That's exactly why they did it. Ooh, boy, they're going to hate this video. That's why we see in Revelation chapter 2, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. <coughs> Remember Laodicea, they're rich, have need of nothing. No, it's not that they're blind, miserable, wretched, and don't know it, right? It says, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. 
Listen, my friends, especially at the movement uh, among our black brothers and sisters, and no doubt many of you probably are Jewish as well, it's not based on the color of your skin. It's based on whether or not you're of a Nephilim race. And by the fruits is how you know them. Those Jews in Israel today that are hearing the message of Yeshua and they are believing it, those are the real remnant of Israel. Those are the real Jews. Those are the ones that truly believe and hear the word of Almighty God. But when the eyes are so blind, they cannot see. And they say, we have Abraham to our father because my mother was a Jew. No. You're known by your works. If you believe Yeshua to be the Mashiach, then certainly you are not a Nephilim. You are a true son of Almighty God. And that doesn't matter if it's your mother or your father. But it's interesting how they've tried to change the word of God to be able to make sure that they would have some inheritance. It doesn't work, friends. That's why Yeshua dealt with John in the book of Revelation. I know that tribulation, poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but they are the synagogue of Satan. Which one was it? It was amongst the Pharisees. You know, it's not a good thing to say you're a descendant of the Pharisees from 2,000 years ago. Now, granted, understand, there were Pharisees that believed like Nicodemus, that believed Yeshua was the Mashiach. Why? He was not descendant of the race of the Nephilim. But when Yeshua gave that beautiful parable over there in Matthew chapter 13, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath the tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Well then, do we go and gather them up? But he said, No. Lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let them alone. Let them grow to the harvest. That's when he'll separate them. He'll send his servants, the two witnesses. Why does he say, what, let's look at that. Let both grow together into the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares and bind them in the bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. That's the message, message of the two witnesses. Their message itself binds the tares and separates them from the wheat. I trust it's a blessing to you. Listen, if it is a blessing and you want to hear the truth and this is what you appreciate in hearing, would you support the work that we're doing here? Would you help us in keeping this type of ministry going? We can't do it without your help and we appreciate your help tremendously. You can do so by donating on our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, little donation spot. Of course, right here at the end of the broadcast, right up underneath the screen there, you'll see um, our mailing address here in Orlando, Florida. You can do that. Actually, it's called Champions Gate. It's still Orlando, but it's Champions Gate, Florida. You can mail there. And if you have trouble with either of those two ways there, just go to Patreon. If you want to become a monthly donor, uh, whether you listen to our videos there or not, you can do that. You can still do that there. Patreon.com forward slash forward slash Israeli News Live. Just look at it in the description below on this channel here. We have that information there for you below. And we thank you for your help and your support. Blessings to you. And may our Heavenly Father bless you with love and all those that you do love. I'm Stephen Benoon with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research, as well as Israeli News Live. We thank you and ask you, God's shalom be upon you in a world of angels. Shalom. There is no peace. Yeah.